I sometimes read uh, public domain books here on Leaves of Glen. And they were written a long time ago, uh, so they're usually uh, racist or sexist or bigoted. Uh, But in there somewhere and all that is a a story, and that's why those stories are famous. Other times, I read uh, works from independent authors, and they're delightfully not racist, but they might have adult language or adult situations. So that's your warning, uh, but I'm sure... You uh, are grown up enough to handle it. Don't write to me complaining. Ah, welcome to Leaves of Glen, uh, where I read the the hottest uh, public domain books and short stories. That came out really awkward. Kind of shouted that, and it didn't sound cool at all. Uh, this week, uh, weekend, uh, it's been a long week. This week, we're reading the Blue Fairy Book by Andrew Lang again. Uh, This time we're reading Rumpelstiltskin. This book is the first out of 25, uh, all different colors, uh, and named after the colors of the books that they're in. Uh, Fantasy stories gathered from all around the world and translated uh, by Andrew Lang's wife. Well, usually I go into a whole bit about uh, my cat giving me unrelated facts about the story we're going to read because there is no author for me to read about, since fairy tales are handed down from one group of people to another, uh, there's not really a a certain person you can learn about who wrote it, and learning about Andrew Lang is boring. So, uh, usually Sixer, my six-toed cat who's 22 years old, all of that's true, none of that's made up, uh, gives me some kind of unrelated tidbit. But this week, he just sort of sat on the couch uh, watching Pay Wubby Money uh, videos on YouTube, and uh, not really paying attention to me. So I looked up uh, various tidbits about the, uh, the Grimm's fairy tales, the Grimm brothers, uh, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, which have nothing to do with this book that we're reading, but I'm going to tell it to you anyways. Uh, they weren't for children at all, initially. Uh, they were supposed to preserve the true spirit of the Germanic people. Uh, they never actually traveled through the woods, uh, gathering stories from... From old men or old women in straw huts wearing weird little aprons. Uh, Actually, it was usually uh, rich women, uh, specifically women for the most part, that were just good at telling stories that would show up at their house and they'd write down what they said. Uh, That was kind of it. Uh, The only person that was odd uh, was a uh, retired soldier who asked uh, for old clothes in exchange for telling the story, which is kind of sad. Uh, but they kept adding to and editing the collection, publishing a final 7th edition in 1857. Uh, and it's the basis for most Ger- uh, versions of German tales published today and contains 210 stories, as well as familiar magical stories and also has many cautionary and religious tales. Uh, this week's story, Rumpelstiltskin, uh, is supposed to be ambling, uh, has crazy plot holes, but it's uh, a moral uh, tale giving you the story of uh, what happens when someone lies and how everything just kind of falls apart from there. Uh, Normally, I continue to ramble for a long time, which is why I have the old grandfather clock in this uh, sound effects drawing room that I've created here for the intro. And the grandfather clock's supposed to toll the bell to let me know when I should shut up and start reading the story. But since uh, I got no Sixer stories... Uh, I just have nothing to do, so let's cheat. Say that the bell is tolling right now. Oh, time for me to go and start telling you the story of Rumpelstiltskin. Stillskin. Ah, there once upon a time, uh, a poor miller who had a very beautiful daughter, as they always do. Now it happened one day that he had an audience with the king, and in order to appear a person of some importance, he told him that he had a daughter who could spin straw into gold. And I've done that before, gotten really nervous around someone you're impressed with, and you wind up telling a ridiculous lie. 
Now that's a talent worth having, said the king to the miller. If your daughter is as clever as you say, uh, bring her to my place um, tomorrow, and I'll put her to the test. Well, when the girl was brought to him, uh, he led her into a room full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a spindle, and said, And I set to work and spin all night till early dawn, and if by that time you haven't spun the straw into gold, you'll, uh, you shall die. Then he closed the door behind him and left her alone inside. So the poor miller's daughter uh, sat down and didn't know what in the world she was supposed to do. Uh, she hadn't the least idea how to spin straw into gold and became at last so miserable that uh, she began to cry. Suddenly the door opened and in stepped a a tiny little man, he said, Good evening, uh, Miss Miller maid. Uh, why are you crying so bitterly? Oh, answered the girl, I have to spin straw into gold and have a notion how it's done. Uh, oh, you give me if I spin it for you, asked the mannequin. M-A-N-I-K-I-N. Well, it can't mean mannequin as we understand it, so let's look it up on the Kindle. Uh, mannequin. A person who's very small, especially one not otherwise abnormal or deformed. Yeah, okay. Uh, my necklace, replied the girl. Oh, the little man took the necklace, sat himself down at the wheel, and whirr, 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 the wheel went round three times, and the bobbin was full. Uh, then he put on another, and uh, whirr, 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 the wheel went round three times, and the second two was full, and so it went on until the morning, when all the straw was spun away, and all the bobbins were full of gold. As soon as the sun rose, the king came. Well, then where did the little man go? It's not like he could disappear. He had to open a door to come in the room. Did he get out quick? And then, yeah, or hide behind the gold. When he perceived the gold, he was astonished. Ooh, and delighted. But his heart only lusted more than ever after the precious metal. He had the miller's daughter put into another room full of straw, much bigger than the first, and bade her, if she valued her life, spin it all into gold before the following morning. Well, if this is the way he's going to keep going, why doesn't he just basically say, you're going to spin gold for me forever or I'll kill you, instead of going through this thing of like, okay, tomorrow, and like as if she's got an exit plan. Uh, the girl didn't know what to do uh, and began to cry. Uh, then the door opened as before, and a tiny little man appeared and said, uh, what do you give me if I spin the straw into gold for you? A uh, ring, a uh, ring for my finger, answered the girl. Well, the mannequin took the ring and whirr, exclamation point. Round went the spinning wheel again, and when morning broke, he had spun all the straw into glittering gold. Now the king was pleased beyond measure at the sights of his, but his greed for gold was still not satisfied. See, this is where you just say, you're doing this forever or I'll kill you. And he had the miller's daughter brought to yet a bigger room. You could just have one room, just keep filling it with straw. And said, you must spin all this away in the night, but if you succeed this time, I shall become my wife. She's only a miller's daughter, tis true, he thought, but I couldn't find a richer wife if I were to search the whole world over. Again, marry him. Uh, he's probably still going to kill you if you don't stop spinning gold. Uh, when the girl was alone, uh, the little man appeared for the third time and said, uh, 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 What do you give me if I spin the straw uh, for you once again? I have nothing more to give, answered the girl. Then promise me when you are uh, when you're queen uh, to give me a first child. Nah. Uh, who knows what may not happen before that, thought the miller's daughter. And besides, she saw no other way out of it. So she promised the mannequin what he demanded, and he set to work once more and spun the straw into gold. Uh, when the king came in the morning, he found everything as he had desired. He straightway made her his wife, and the miller's daughter became a queen. But a... Uh, when a year had passed, a beautiful son was born to her, and she thought no more of the little man till all of a sudden, uh, one day, with the, ex the bizarre world she lives in where she's forced to spin straw into gold, and this one little man saved her life, she forgot all about him. Uh, stepped into her room and said, uh, Now, uh, give me what you promised. Burp, the queen, oh, was in a great state and offered the little man all the riches in her kingdom if he would only leave her the child. But the, but the mannequin said, No, uh, a living creature uh, is dearer to me than all the treasures in the world. And then the queen began to cry and sob so bitterly that the little man was sorry for her and said, uh, ah, I'll give you three days to guess my name. Yeah. And if you find out uh, in that time, you may keep a child. 
Well, then the queen pondered uh, the whole night over all the names she had ever heard and sent a messenger to scour the land uh, and pick up uh, far and near any names uh, he could come across. When the little man arrived on the following day, she began with uh, Casper, uh, Malachor, Belshazzar, and all the other names she knew. She knew those names, and in a string, but at each one, the mannequin called out, That's not my name. And the next day, she sent to inquire the names of all the people in the neighborhood and had a long list of the most uncommon and extraordinary for the little man uh, when he made his appearance. Uh, is your name, perhaps, uh, Sheepshanks? Uh, Crookshanks? Uh, Spindleshanks? Well, she's really leading on those shank-based names. But he always replied, uh, ah, That's not my name. Ah. And on the third day, the messenger returned and announced... I have not been able to find any new names, but, yeah, but I came across a, a high hill around the corner of the wood, uh, where the corner of the wood, uh, where the foxes and the hares uh, bid each other good night, and I saw a, saw a little house, and in front of the house uh, burned a fire, and around the fire sprang a ooh the most grotesque little man hopping on one leg and crying, uh, "Tomorrow I brew, uh, today I bake." And then the, the child away I'll take uh, for a little deems my royal dame. That Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Well, you can imagine the queen's delight hearing the name. And when the little man stepped in shortly afterward and asked, uh, Now, my lady queen, what's my name? At first, she asked, uh, Is your name Conrad? Yeah, no. Uh, is your name Harry? Uh, no. Is your name uh, perhaps oh, Rumpelstiltskin? Some demon has told you that. Some demon has told you that, screamed the little man, and in his rage drove his foot so far into the ground that it sank in up to his waist. Uh, and then uh, in a passion, uh, he seized his left foot with both hands and tore himself in two. Uh, well, that turned out to be a lot shorter than I expected. Uh, and I'm not going to have a 12 minute long episode so next up why the sea is salt hmm. once upon a time uh, long long ago there were two brothers uh, the one rich and the other poor uh, when Christmas Eve came uh, the poor one had not a bite in the house uh, either of meat or bread so he went to his brother and begged him in God's name to give him something for Christmas Day. And it was by no means the first time the brother had been forced to give something to him, and he was not better pleased at being asked now than he generally was. If you will do what I ask you, uh, you shall have a whole ham, burp, said he. The poor one uh, immediately thanked him and promised this. Well, here is the ham, and now you must go straight to Dead Man's Hall. Uh, said the rich brother, throwing the ham to him. Uh, well, I will do what I have promised, said the other, and he took the ham and set off. It went on for the live-long day, and at nightfall he came to a place where there was a bright light. I have no doubt this is the place, uh, thought the man with the ham. <laughs> I love that he's just the man with the ham now. And the old man with the long white beard was uh, standing in the, in the outhouse uh, chopping yule logs. Uh, good evening, said the man with the ham. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, where are you going at this late hour, said the man. Uh, I'm going to Dead Man's Hall, if only I'm on the right track, answered the poor man. What's Dead Man's Hall? Oh, yes, uh, you're right enough, for it is here, said the old man. When you get inside, uh, they'll all want to buy your ham, uh, for they don't get much meat to eat there. But you must not sell it uh, unless you can get the hand mill, which stands behind the door, for it. Uh, when you come out again, I will teach you how to stop the hand mill, uh, which is useful for almost everything. I have no idea what's going on right now. What's Dead Man's Hall? Is it just where like, ghosts live? I don't understand. Uh, what's a hand mill? Uh, so the man, uh, with the ham, thanked the other for his good advice and, and rapped at the door. Uh, when he got in, everything happened just as the old man said it would. All the uh, people, great and small, came round him like uh, ants uh, on an anthill and uh, tried to outbid the other for the ham. Uh, by rights, 
My old woman and I ought to have it for our Christmas dinner. Uh, But since you have set your hearts upon it, I must just give it up to you, said the man. But if I sell it, I will have a a hand mill, which is standing there uh, behind the door. Oh, at first they would not hear of this and, and haggled and bargained with the man, but he stuck to what he had said and the people were forced to give him the hand mill. The hell is a hand mill? When the man came out again into the yard, he asked the old woodcutter how he was to stop the hand mill. And when he had learned that, he thanked him and set off home with all the speed he could, but did not get there until after the clock had struck twelve on Christmas Eve. So, what's a hand mill? Let's see if I can look it up. Searching Wikipedia, it's treadwheel or treadmill. Uh, in the form of an engine, typically powered by humans, and it may resemble a water wheel in appearance, and it can be worked either by human treading paddles set into its circumference, or by a human or animal standing inside it. How is this like a little thing behind the door you can just carry around with them? All right, moving on. Uh, Where in the world have you been? said the old woman. Uh, Here I have sat waiting uh, for hour after hour, and have not even two sticks to lay across each other under the Christmas porch pot. Oh, I I could not come before. I had something of importance to see about, and and a long way to go, too. But now you shall see, said the man. And then he sat the hand mill on the table. How small is this thing? And bade it first grind light, uh, then a tablecloth, and then meat and beer, and everything else that was good for a Christmas Eve supper, and the mill ground all that was ordered. It's like having a a salt shaker that can just produce anything. Uh, "'Bless me,' ah, said the old woman, uh, as one thing after another appeared, and she wanted to know from where her husband had got the mill from, ah, but he would not tell her that. "'Never mind ah, where I got it. Ah, you can see that it's a good one, and the water that turns it will never freeze,' said the man. So he, how small is this thing? <laughs> so he ground the meat and drink and all kinds of good things uh, to last all Christmas tide, and, and on the third day... He invited all his friends to come to a feast. Again, like all these stories, you have a a machine that's pocket-sized that can literally bend atoms to produce anything you want, and the most he can do is just keep churning out more uh, average food. Now, when the rich brother saw all that there was at the banquet in the house, he was both vexed, oh, and angry, for he grudged everything his brother had uh, on Christmas Eve. Oh, he's so poor that he came to me and and begged me for a trifle, yeah, for God's sake. And now he gives a feast as if he were both a count uh, and a king, thought he. But for heaven's sake, tell me where you got your riches from, he said to the brother. Uh, from behind the door, said he who owned the mill. Oh, now he's not the man that holds hand to me anymore. Uh, for he did not choose to satisfy his brother on that point, but later in the evening, when he had taken a drop, nah, too much, he could not refrain from telling how he had come by the hand mill. There, you will see what has brought me all of my wealth, said he, and brought out the mill and made a grind, first one thing and then another, like a, what, like a yak, and then like a whole chair. And then the brother saw that he insisted on having the mill, and after a great deal of persuasion, I got it. Uh, But he had to give $300 for it, and the poor brother was to keep it till the haymaking was over. Uh, For he thought, if I keep it as long as that, I can make it grind meat and drink that'll last uh, many a year. Well, during that time, I'd imagine that the mill did not grow rusty, and when hay harvest came, the rich brother got it, but the other had taken good care not to teach him how to stop it. It was an evening when the rich man uh, got the mill home, and in the morning he bade the old woman to go out and spread the hay after the mowers, and, and he would attend to the house himself that day, he said. So, uh, when dinner time drew near, I set the mill on the kitchen table, Uh, because this thing is average size, and said, uh, grind herrings and milk pottage and do it both quickly and well. So uh, the mill began to grind herrings and milk pottage. Uh, At first all the dishes and tubs were filled, and then came out all the way to the kitchen floor, and the man twisted and turned it. He did all he could to make the mill stop, but howsoever he turned it and screwed it, the mill went on grinding. And in a short time, the pottage rose so high uh, that the man was likely to be drowned. So he threw open the parlor door, but it was uh, not long before the mill had ground the parlor full too, and it was 
with difficulty and danger that the man could go through the stream of pottage and get hold of the door latch. And when he got the door open, he did not uh, stay long in the room, but ran out, and the herrings and pottage came after him. And it streamed out over both farm and field, and now the old woman, who was out spreading the hay, uh, began to think dinner was long in coming, and said to the women and the mowers, uh, though the master uh, does not call us home, eh, we may as well go. It may be that he, uh, he finds he is not good ha, 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 at making pottage, and I should do well to help him. So they began to straggle homeward, but uh, when they had got a little way up the hill, they, they met the herrings and pottage and bread, all pouring forth and winding about all over the other. Uh, the man himself in front of the flood, uh, would to heaven that each of you uh, had a hundred stomachs. <laughs> Take care that you are not drowned in porridge. He cried as he went by them as if mischief were at his heels, uh, down to where his brother dwelt. And then he begged him, for God's sake, they keep saying that phrase a lot in here, to take the mill back again. And that in an instant, for, said he, if it grind one more hour, the whole district will be destroyed by herrings and pottage. Yeah, if this thing can never get old or break, uh, you can perpetually just keep making more pottage and uh, it could fill the whole world with it and create a great apocalypse of deliciousness. But the brother would not take it until the other had paid him $300 and that he was obliged to do so. Now the poor brother had both the money <laughs> and the mill again. So it was not long before he had a farmhouse much finer than that in which his brother lived, but the mill ground him so much money that he covered it with plates of gold. And the farmhouse lay close by the seashore, so it shone and glittered far out to sea. Everyone who sailed by there now had to put in to visit the rich man in the gold farmhouse. And everyone wanted to see the wonderful mill, for the report of it spread far and wide, and there was no one who had not heard tell of it. You'd think that you would have to build something safe to keep it in, because people are probably going to steal it. After a long, long time came also a skipper who wished to see the mill. He asked if he could make salt. Yes, it could make salt, said he who owned it. And when the skipper heard that, he wished with all his might and main to have the mill. And let it cost what it might, for he thought if he had it, he would get off having to sail far away over the perilous sea for freighters of salt. At first, the man would not hear of parting with it, but the skipper begged, oh, and prayed, and, and at last the man sold it to him and got many, many thousands of dollars for it. When the skipper had got the mill on his back, he did not stay there long, for he was so afraid that the man would change his mind, and uh, he had no time to ask how he was to stop it grinding, so he got on board his ship as fast as he could. And when he got a little way back out to sea, he took the mill on deck at grind salt and uh, grind both quickly and well, said the skipper. And so the mill began to grind salt till it spouted out like, uh, like, uh, like water. And when the skipper had got the ship filled, he wanted to stop the mill, but whichsoever way he turned it and how much soever he tried, it went on grinding and the heap of salt grew higher and higher until uh, at last the, the ship sank. There, there, there lies the mill at the bottom of the sea. And still, day by day, it grinds on. And that is why uh, the sea is salty. Well, what, uh, what happened in these two stories? Uh, Rumpelstiltskin? A... Dad doesn't care about his daughter and just lies about how she can make gold out of nothing. And uh, the king puts her through a series of psychologically well, harrowing steps before he finally marries her, not out of love, but out of greed. Uh, a lot of inconsistencies. Uh, why keep moving into different rooms? Just take the same room, throw more hay in it. Uh, tell her, like a slave, you're going to do this forever, I'll kill you. Uh, doesn't have to marry if he doesn't want to. But uh, nothing makes sense in this story. Little man comes through the door, magically disappears later. Why do you use the door in the first place? I don't know. Apparently it doesn't matter. Uh, why Why is a, a, little, a little man who can spin gold out of nothing uh, live in a tiny little hut and want a baby? Uh, none of that seems to make any difference. Uh, but as I had read earlier, it's, uh, it's all about lying and the consequences of lying. 
And it's also about how beautiful young daughters uh, don't have their own agency. They don't get to make their own decisions. Uh, Even within those times it was told, there's no word about how upset she would be being forced into this situation and then being forced to marry a king that was about to kill her. Not kind of a relationship you want to be in. Uh, In the end, Rumpelstiltskin grabs his own leg and tears himself in half, which is kind of weird. Something I think I'd like to see in a weird kind of way. I'm sure there's a some place I can go and pay money to see something like that. Uh, next one, uh, how the sea is salt is uh, weird, but delightful. Now they keep describing the man with whatever he owns. When he is a poor man, he's just a man that's poor. And when he's got a ham, he's just uh, cartoonishly carrying his ham around everywhere he goes. And he's referred to as the man with the ham. Then he goes to the, what, Hall of the Dead or whatever. And uh, don't really know what that's about. Apparently it's got living people that are hungry. Uh, And then this contraption that, when you look it up online, is a big, huge milling thing that involves animals or people, but uh, apparently it's small enough to put on a table uh, and runs water, which I guess has its own water source. None of that makes sense either. Uh, And again, for the millionth time, unintelligent people, given uh, all the power in the universe, uh, just does stuff like, "Ah, make more ham, turns it on and makes more ham. Uh... Well, what's good about these two stories? Eh, they're, they're creative. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, they're not horrible. They're fairy tales. I just didn't realize that fairy tales were so poorly thought out. But uh, maybe people back in the day when these fairy tales were told were just not very smart people. And this is the best they could do. And uh, maybe the characters are realistic to the uh, psychology or the intelligence levels of the people telling the story. Uh, uh, what sucks uh, that everyone's dumb. Everyone in these stories are not smart people or good people. Uh, I guess the only good person would usually be the uh, like the the woman uh, in Rumpelstiltskin. She's good only in that we don't know anything about her because she doesn't have her own agency and doesn't get to express anything. Uh, what do we learn? Uh, don't lie. And if you have something that can make you infinite amounts of money, I mean, you could create people probably out of that machine. Like, I want my mom back. It just, there she is. Uh, I could want 12 of them. There's 12 moms. Uh, don't give it away. Stop selling it all the time. You sold it to a guy who's going to take off in a ship. It means you're never going to see it again. It doesn't matter if you got $1,000 for it. You could, you could get that plus, um, where am I going? I don't know. Why am I getting upset? I'm going to calm down. Let's just, uh, let's just go to the closing segment that's pre-recorded and just call this thing done. Ah, uh, well, it appears you found me in the part of the podcast I hate the most where I tell you all about the places on the internet where you can find me. Tell I hate this because of the sound effects making it sound like a stormy night uh, in the drawing room of the damned. Now, nah, there's, there's that. Well, uh, you can find me uh, at my website, nuzzlehouse.com, where I have a backlog of everything I've ever read. Uh, you can search for it by author if you're a weirdo who's into that kind of thing. Uh, you can also find me on my completely dead and never used Instagram at House Nuzzle. Uh, which you'll never see me update. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, at House Nuzzle, where uh, eh, you can leave me a message or something if you want. I post on there just when I have new episodes and nothing else. Or if you want to speak to me directly, you can email me at glenn.nuzzles at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and uh, we will see you in the next episode. Now let's see. I swear I still got one left down here. No, that's got a cigarette button.